Hey everybody, it is Quicken and welcome back to Five Back Friday. We're in my backyard, which is the very first location, the very first Five Back Friday was ever filmed. This week I asked you guys to reach out to me on Twitter for question submissions. I got a couple messages that were like, hey, I've messaged you on Snapchat and my snap was never opened. How do I reach out to you? So I thought Twitter would be a great platform. The only reason I haven't exercised my Twitter more often is because I kind of don't know how to use it. Um, I've been trying to use it a little bit more every day for the last couple months. And I think we had a lot of success this week. Five Fat Friday submissions on Twitter and then other submission-based videos in the future, I think on Twitter would be really cool. Thanks to everybody who submitted, who is helping this grandma figure out how to use Twitter. My new tattoo. So I thought it would be super cool to talk about my like thought process for how I planned and received this tattoo because this time around, I actually like didn't just go and like roll the dice or like throw a dart at like a board of tattoos. Ethan. We really did like go through and plan this one out. So instead of a full episode of Tattoo Talk Tuesday this week, after this video, give this video a thumbs up if you want to see like my method and how we planned out the entire new tattoo that I have. And I get a lot of questions about like how do you decide placement, what's your inspiration, what's your method for figuring out like tattoos that you want. And Sometimes it's definitely not like that cut and dry, but this time around like it really was like Step one two and three and then we had the tattoo idea figured out. I just have to figure out a title honestly um, I told you guys that the big reason tattoo talk Tuesday like never came out is because I couldn't figure out a title if You have a title idea. Please leave that down below too. I'm thinking like tattoo Idea beginning to end. I don't like I don't know. Okay. On to Twitter, again, thank you guys. I am a grandma, I'm going out of the Amino app, and on to Twitter. Yes, I'm still playing. Like for a couple days I couldn't get on the server and it kept saying that it couldn't authenticate my, I, my user ID. And I thought that was just because of like an issue with the email verification. And then I was like, oh man, I made that Pokemon video. Maybe someone tried to like hack my account. Like, I don't know. But I was able to log in like three days ago and I've been playing ever since. Is your hair naturally the color of your roots? How easy are your green tips to manage? So all of this brown right here is actually my natural. And when I had my hair balayage last year, last June, um, everything out has everything else has grown out since my hair was like lipstick red for years and years and years and it was really important to me to like see my natural see what it looked like and actually in the front right here all this hair all this is my root and then all this hair is really light and I was like complaining at work like I'm going blonde my mom is a natural redhead and I was always worried that like one day that would happen to me I don't think I'm getting too red, but my green is actually really easy to maintain. But then again, I've had natural, unnatural color hair for like the last decade. So it's definitely like second nature for me at this point. I do want to create a video on like how to keep your hair bright because I did make a how to keep your tattoos bright video. Definitely look out for that. As far as ease, it's definitely really cool, but like on the same accord, I love the way it looks faded and fading my hair out these last couple weeks has been really cool and something that I actually like really enjoy watching. It's easy to maintain if you're into it and if you're not into it the faded look is like really cool too. Would you ever consider getting a highly visible t places tattooed? Hands, throat, and chest. I've had this question before on 5 Fact Friday but I don't know if it was like worded exactly the same. It's definitely challenging to get those places tattooed, especially on someone like me who likes to be able to like put on a long sleeve or put on like opaque tights and completely like disappear and hide all of my tattoos. I think I get a lot of questions like, you seem like you hate tattoos and you seem like you're self-conscious about your tattoos and I'd love to explain that further because it's definitely like an in-depth kind of thought process, but for me, 
yeah, being able to put all my tattoos away and being able to hide them definitely doesn't come from a place of like hating my tattoos, but, and this is gonna seem like hypocritical because I have a series all about talking about my tattoos, but sometimes I really don't like when they dominate the conversation. And when I see extended family or if it's like Thanksgiving or God forbid I see someone from my high school, sometimes it's just like not something I want to share with people or not something I want to talk about. And I think like if I got a throat tattoo or like a behind my ear or like fingers, I think it could be challenging to disappear and blend in and not be noticed, not stick out. And it's something that like I'm really interested in and like being able to blend in in a crowd over the last couple years has been something that I've really found a lot of interest in and something that's really satisfying to me. Like I said, I had that bright red hair for years and years and I had um, a lot of facial modifications, a lot of piercings, and I think that having all of those things I thought would put me in a place where I, I would be outcasted and I would be undermined and I would be forgotten. And honestly, they put a spotlight on me and I didn't like it. I didn't like being noticed all the time. And I mean, not to say that it's a terrible thing and it, it you know, sometimes I'll go places and being able to relate to people and talk to people who are like-minded and who are tattooed is like such a blessing. And you may have seen these pictures of me and my old friend Alyssa at Coney Island. And when she used to come to Philadelphia and we used to hang out and be like tattooed women together, it was amazing and it was so cool of being with like another tattooed woman and walking around and being strong. But being able to turn it off is something that I really enjoy too. And I think if I like had a throat tattoo, being able to find that satisfaction would just be a little more challenging. So I don't know, it's not to say it'll never ever happen. I just wonder if I'll be able to exist in a place where I can just disappear in like a room full of people. And who knows, in like in 10 years, in two years, next week, maybe I'll be like, I want to be the center of attention all the fucking time. Like, maybe some part of my brain will switch on, but it, it's, really, it's just not happening right now. And it's hard because someone's going to comment and be like, you love attention, you're on YouTube, but like, at this point, like, I'm on YouTube for you guys, so, like, I like it, of course, it's a great exercise in creativity, but reaching out to you guys is number one. I've gotten this question a couple times and I'm just gonna read it from at baby scrampy and it's when do you think your merch will be on sale? And I talked to you guys um, about introducing merch when I hit 100,000 subscribers which happened last week, two weeks ago, which is super exciting and my brother um, even called me and he was like make sure you thank everybody who helped you get to 100,000 subscribers. And I was like, obviously like no doubt. And he was like, when you get your play button, you have to make a video about it. Cause um, my brother watches YouTube videos. I think he's in a, like a different circle of interest. I think he's like liking PewDiePie and stuff like that. So he knows that his YouTubers, like he likes the way that they um, like communicate with their viewers and stuff. And I do too. I was hoping, like, with his advice to make the, um, like, play button unboxing and, like, thank everybody. Honestly, like, I'm still, I'm still shocked that it's a reality. We, all of us together, like, I get so many messages from you guys who are like, I've been here since the beginning, and it, it's really just really crazy. What a crazy ride. Um, so every day, like, I can't thank you guys enough, and I thought the merch would be great. I definitely, like... I wanted the merch to not necessarily like celebrate 100,000 subscribers, but I didn't want to be like super cocky and have like merch last year. Like 
because I wanted to establish myself and I wanted you guys to trust me and trust that like if you bought one of my t-shirts that like next week I wouldn't completely change and be a person you didn't want to represent so that's why I wanted a hundred thousand subscribers I wanted it to be like okay like you guys you know what you're in for and if you spend like eight dollars on an enamel pin it's because you like the design and you trust me and maybe like you want to wear it and meet other people who um, subscribe to the channel too because I mean I've said this a thousand times everyone who came to the Quicken meetup we were all cut from the same cloth we were all similar people and even you know um, if we came from different backgrounds different genders different ex like just just different views on life all of us got along and everybody was chatting and even people who were meeting each other for the very first time got along and I think all of us have that in common if you subscribe to a beauty channel all of those people have the interest of makeup but I think this channel has like so many different aspects if you guys come here and you're like I enjoy this then I'm happy to create content for you so here's the scoop with the um, the merch I have um, a t-shirt guy and he's going to create the design and I had a meeting with him last week because I'm never pre-sale could be a really good idea that way we know exactly how many shirts to make and how many sizes to order and stuff like that I'm gonna offer unisex t-shirts and although like one of my favorite independent t-shirt companies right now stay at home club they offer like really cool loose t-shirts I think that would be something we'd have to explore in the future because this first time around I want to make things affordable and available to everybody um, when we did the quick and prints a lot of people messaged me and they said I can't afford these and it was pretty it, it was pretty upsetting to me as someone who wants to be able to give everybody a chance to create something that wasn't affordable to everybody so you know one day I'd like to be artistic with it and offer like really cool stuff but I think having a pre-sale or having some sort of poll where I can judge how many shirts and what sizes to make would be beneficial and we are going to make a limited run so I'm in conversations with him the other thing I'm, I'm going to create is enamel pins all of us fucking love enamel pins and I have that design finished and then what are you eating? where did you get a chip in the backyard? So the design for the pin has been in the making. We, it's been a painting to a digital to a vector and now it is being sent to the pin making company now. And that, you know, takes like up to a month. So everything is definitely in production. It's just like, like I said, 100,000 subscribers has been a daydream to me. You know, I should have planned some of this stuff sooner, but there was no guarantee that I would ever hit 100K. Um, and maybe, I don't know, I should have been more on top of it, but I think this will be really fun. And maybe one day I'll make that zine and I can create some sort of package where you get the t-shirt, the pin, and the zine, and a, a piece of paper that I kissed. Uh, quite cool kid. You're a sugar skull tattoo. When you talk about it, you don't seem to love it. Would you rework it like you did your arm tattoo? And, um... It's been in a couple videos. It was in like my uh, tattoos I forgot I had video. And Ethan, where is he? He's under my chair. Um, oh, police. Um, I think about reworking that tattoo all the time. It's funny you say that. I've actually had one consultation to get it redone by Martin, the guy who redid my shark tattoo, and we were going to put um, a moth there, 
And then I just figured that it wouldn't really be a really clear cover up. And you know my mantra, like if you can get it lightened, like laser lightened first, I think it makes it really a better successful cover up. So I had all that in mind. And then um, it's funny cause my, my ex boyfriend, he is like very tattooed. And his whole thing is like, just get your body covered. Just get covered. Get every square inch covered no matter what. No matter what fucking tattoo. Um, and I've had that, that sugar skull tattoo for a while and I've hated it for a while. And he used to say like, what's the problem? The spot is covered. And I was like, yeah, it is, I guess. And although I'm not like super satisfied with the tattoo, I think it's weird and creepy and I don't, I don't, I don't know, like it's not something, it feels really foreign on my body. The spot is covered and sometimes like that's fine, you know, it, it's nothing I ever see. Everything I wear is high waisted, like even like my underwear is high waisted, so like it's almost always covered by fabric and I never ever see it like my bathing suit is like kind of high-waisted so it's always covered so getting it reworked is something I think about but it's not like a really high priority to me getting my arm reworked was really important because I really didn't like the work that was underneath it and I really wanted to bring my whole arm together and having Mark like complete my arm, I think just brings the whole arm together. The skull on my hip is kind of just like, well, I don't really have another hip tattoo. It's on the side of my body where I don't have any other tattoos, so it's like not disrupting the tattoos around it. It's a Luna P ball um, from Sailor Moon, because I thought that would be really great, just pop a big purple circle on that thing, call it a day, but I think I would need laser removal and I would have to find an artist who specializes in cartoon anime tattooing and all of that just seems like a ton of work for a tattoo in an area I never ever see or look out or consider but then again maybe it'll help me love that space all over again that's my confliction and you know I have to keep parts of my body like available in case I meet like these dream tattoo artists I've always wanted to so who knows maybe I'll keep it open and they'll feature me on that show worst tattoos and they'll hire an actor to portray me getting that tattoo and I told you that well in that video tattoos I forgot I have the girl who tattooed it on me made it her business card and then a bunch of other people got it too. So I also feel really detached to it because I feel like it's just not my own tattoo. Who knows? Tattoo reality TV shows. Anyway, that's Five Pack Friday. Thank you to everybody who submitted questions on my Twitter. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm going to try to use it as much as possible, especially to like navigate through questions and stuff. Snapchat is a great app, but in the last couple weeks it's been really hard to navigate through. Like, I get it, like questions only coming up for five seconds. It's just like kind of hard because I'm like, wait, what does that say? My camera roll is so full. Anyway, no excuses. My, my Twitter is at quietcoolkid, just like my Instagram. You can follow it or you can just at me if you want. Um, stay tuned for the episode all about my, my, uh, tattoo here. Um, thank you to everybody always. I love you guys so much. Like and subscribe, and until next week, I love you guys. Bye. Hey, everyone. It's 100 degrees, and we are doing another house tour video. Our air conditioner is in this house, but it's trapped and